maybe there aren't really spirits. What we're actually encountering is just different timelines. So that when if a spirit walks through the house and looks at you, maybe in his timeline he will then go to his wife and say, "I've just seen a weird bloke sat on, yeah. sat on the sofa." Sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's understanding that we're all consciousness, and that, that when when you die, your consciousness, something called the soul or the spirit, um, basically it's free of this biological vessel. And this biological vessel is what keeps us trapped within this five sense reality, yeah. and restricts the true, um, I guess, the true. Word. That was the word. Basically, the true fullness of what a consciousness can do. And without the biological vessel, it's free. And it can now vibrate on multiple frequencies. Mm -hmm. It can come in and out as it pleases. Because I felt like I was stood stock still. According to the people around me, I was doing the Michael Jackson movie. Which, for someone who's 19 and a half stone, six foot one, that's difficult to do. Um, so literally, like that. Literally, stood like that. Right. Good afternoon, your night followers. A uh, little bit off strange days, so I uh, thought better get a strange man in. Hello. Kieran Woodhouse, he's <laughs> a paranormal expert, researcher, researcher. No one's an expert. No, okay. <laughs> paranormal. Um, I mean, anything that goes bump in the night, he used to go to ring. So a uh, little bit different, but as we're all about consciousness, our belief is that we're all connected through this thing, whatever the UFO. Paranormal, UFO, consciousness, we're all one being. So collectively it shows itself in many different forms. So this is Kieran. Nice to meet you, Well, nice to meet you. <laughs> we, we're, you. Yeah. I've known you for a while. Yeah. So uh, how did you get into it? Tell us all about it. Um, well, I've always been uh, interested in the paranormal. Um, I think most people are, whether they like to admit it or not. It's always something that interested me. And um, when I got old enough, it was just a case of going on ghost hunts and um, paying to go with the big franchises who um, I've got a lot of outspoken views about now really but uh, yeah until I found a group that I really liked and settled with them and then became part of them and now I kind of do my own thing as well on the side but uh, it was just been a lifelong passion but you're in the scheme of things you're a young man to have an awareness of this thing yeah I've been told that I've been told I mean even not that age is a thing but yeah well, that's what I was gonna say yeah. I mean you know, in, in the whole terms of consciousness um, age is nothing really, and and you know my consciousness could have been around for. So you feel like centuries. you've been drawn to this. You've always been drawn to this. Yeah, I, 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 I feel that interest? from a young age I had an inquiring mind. Um, slightly off topic, but I remember sitting and crying at the age of eight from the Kosovo crisis, and 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 asking my mum and dad and writing a letter to Tony Blair and asking my mum and dad why why would why would humans do this to each other? Okay. That was eight years old. So I think from that it's almost like a age. soul, like a you felt it. Yeah, it's just just yeah, an emotional thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you run, what's the group you run? You run a. So I, I um I'm in a group called Seventh Sense. I'm in uh, my own kind my own kind of thing I do is called Paranormal Paradigm, and that's becoming a an umbrella. So there's the Paranormal Paradigm podcast. There's the Paranormal Paradigm. Ghost hunting. We'll set links up to all this for our Yeah, yeah, our yeah, viewers. sure. There's the Paranormal Paradigm um, group, which I'm going to start doing and having speakers come and, and speak at, at the local pub. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of becoming a, a Paranormal Paradigm franchise. Midlands is a bit of a hotbed for investigators, is it? Uh, it seems to be actually, yeah. I mean, every time I hear about a ghost hunter, they're always from Wolverhampton. <laughs> I noticed that when I, I think I said to you when I watched that uh, haunted house in. Where's the one up north? Cumbria somewhere. Oh, I think I know. It was 30 East Drive. 30 but, East uh, Drive. Yeah. And every time I saw the investigators, they were, bloody hell, eh? <laughs> we're having a scary time, aren't we? And I thought, 
tips in or yeah yeah there's, there's Wolver, Wolver, Wolver. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah i think there's um you're drawn to it i think the problem is because it, most of it has had a positive effect um it's had more negative than positive but it has had a positive effect whereas it has encouraged people to go out and and hunt and investigate um and so i think it happened nationwide but i don't know if it's just because i'm from around here but i do notice that there is a lot of groups located so, here. So, okay, I'm going to ask you a few things and I want you, obviously I don't want you telling me the total physics of the thing, but a ghost in a building, mm -hmm. could that be just a burn, like a, a, a remnant, a remnant of the, yep. maybe the energy is so strong that it left a burn mark on the fabric of time, is that possible? Um, so there's, so there's a ghost of the spirit, and they're 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 different. They mean different things. Okay. Go on. So um, the general consensus is that a ghost is what you've just described. So a tape, it can't interact with you. It doesn't know you're there. It's just replaying it's just something replaying. it used to do. So imagine if you lived in a house for forty years. You get up, you go downstairs, you make your coffee, you go upstairs, you get dressed, you go to work. Forty years. That's going to imprint some kind of memory yes. on the building. Just as where well, well, you might see somebody walking, so you might see you might see someone coming downstairs. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't acknowledge you. He doesn't interact with yes. your world. He's just there. He walks through the wall because the wall wasn't there when he was there. Um, he's kind of just replaying his life, and that's what happens when you go into a building and you might kind of go, "Oh, I don't like it here," because you're picking up on a residual energy, maybe a murder or a, something yeah. bad happened. Um, a spirit is more intelligent, so a spirit is um, it can interact with you. It can look you in the eyes. It can open your drawers. It can talk to you. Um, it, it can. It, so it's more of an intelligence, um, and I would say that that is consciousness, but without a, a biological vessel like existing ours, in a different on a on an alternate vibrational frequency, yeah, okay. and they can kind of come in and out of our world. Oh, as, we can as come when, in out as when they like as if we do certain things. Yeah. But what um, I mean, I, I mean, when people ask to project talk about going to a, a yeah so in that case there's probably spirits looking at them saying oh what's he doing here yes. you know um so but my my current the theory i'm working on currently is maybe there aren't really spirits what we're actually encountering is just different timelines so that the, when if a spirit walks through the house and looks at you maybe in his timeline he will then go to his wife and say i've just seen a weird bloke sat on, yes. sat on the sofa totally kind of thing um and I actually interviewed a guy who said <laughs> he was lying in bed one night and he heard a, a banging in his bathroom. So he's gone to his bathroom to see what it was, opened the door, and for the briefest of seconds, saw himself cleaning his teeth. Yeah. So what, what we call a glitch in the matrix. A glitch in the matrix, yeah. yeah. So it's almost like the, a previous timeline or maybe a forward yeah, timeline yeah, yeah. has merged and he's seen something he has done or is going to do. Uh, and it's possible that that's actually what a spirit is. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, because all we ever do when we go ghost hunting is we just assume they're from the past. We assume they're dead. We assume it's a, a dead person. And we, you know, what year were you from? But wouldn't it be interesting if when you're doing a spirit board, you're actually communicating with somebody else that's doing a spirit board in an alternate time? Mm -hmm. So one experiment we've done at the at the local pub we investigate is we've um, we did a Ouija board and we asked a bunch of questions. And we've wrote those questions down, and uh, we then answered the questions ourselves. So we've imprinted that memory in that place. It happened there and then. Yeah. We're going to go back in a year to the day, and we're going to ask the same questions and wait for the answers. And they're very unique questions that can only have specific answers. Yeah. And if we get those same answers back, it's possible that it's us answering ourselves from the past. That makes a lot of sense to me. That makes a lot of sense. Because <laughs> there, is only, us, mind, there is only you, isn't there? If there is you, only me. When yeah. you think about the thing. Yeah, yeah. We're all support players in somebody else. In, in our, our own game. In our own game. Yeah. If, yeah. It's, uh, but it's a unique... I haven't heard this take before. Is this something you've cultivated yourself? Or is this I don't own? know. I don't think anyone's idea is original. I think even if they think it is, they've probably no, subconsciously is somebody taken who it. Who's no, not this? really. Or is it just your whole collective thought on consciousness? It's just my whole collective thought. I, I think it's my thought on consciousness and the nature of reality is the most important thing. Yeah. And I think my 
because I've always been more UFO than I have and conspiracies than I have ghosts. Yeah. And if anyone asks me anything about UFOs or conspiracies, I know it like that. I can tell you all of the famous, you know, conspiracy theories, yeah. famous UFO uh, cases. I can they give you the dates of what happened. Ask me about some ghost investigator, and I won't have a clue. Yeah. And I think that plays to my advantage Absolutely. that I don't get caught up in the infighting that happens because it happens in in it just as much as it does with UFOs. Um, I don't kind of get caught up in following other people's theories. Mm. I just keep my head down, keep myself to myself, and like pioneer my own way. Yeah. So I think it's the nature of reality, thought process, combining with paranormal, and it's giving a unique perspective. I like what you said earlier, where you said uh, this is where I am at the moment. So you, nothing, you haven't got it tattooed, it's not cast in stone. Absolutely Your not. opinion is, is willing to be shifted. Yeah, 100%. If there's stronger yeah. evidence. That's, yeah. And that's the only way you can be. Like we know of all sorts of research in different fields that are so set and it's their way and they will bend the evidence to prove their truth. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you've just got to follow the truth, haven't you? You've got to follow what it, the things that you're seeing. And if it's if it plays out a certain way, it plays out a certain way. Yeah. And it's yeah. you that's got to shift. Yeah, it's it, it's me. It's the truth is always the truth. A lot of people they move the facts to fit their own belief system. Yeah, and that's where they fail. So one of my bugbears with people that are most haunted and stuff is how they, you know, that they constantly fake things, and that's obvious. We can get I can get videos on YouTube proving that they fake things. Right. So it, they're 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 trying to manipulate their surroundings to fit their beliefs, and in turn give them a very good earning, very good wage. Um, but for me, I just go down the road that seems the most logical at the time. So um, at the moment, my thought process is X, Y, and Z, and I will carry out experiments to try and back that up. If that doesn't work, I won't change the experiments so it does back it up. Yeah. I will change my thought process, yeah. which then develops more experiments, and on and on you keep going. And I always start my, my lectures with, you know, if you come here for answers, then sorry because <laughs> I don't have them you're going to leave with more questions than answers and I think that's the right way to that's, be that is um, I mean I've, you came to our UFO group that's when we first met and uh, I loved it because you do some interactive um, experiments Yeah. because yeah, ultimately when people go they're a paying customer aren't they yep. you know if you spend that on whatever say 30, 40 quid I'm just, that's cheap is that, <laughs> that's, that's yeah that's cheap most franchise groups now are charging 80 70, 80 quid to, that's to a whole night. Six hours. Okay. And then you'll do, I think we did something like, uh, where there was a few of us stood in the we, road we, with we our eyes shut a, and you a, did that. A spirit, a spirit walk through, we, we, we practiced, yeah, I remember that. Uh, so we're all leaning, just yeah, so the listening I, to you, aren't The you? idea is that you line people up in, in, a, in a line, they can be facing each other or away, and you, you, you ask the spirit to, almost like a pendulum, and you ask the spirit to move them for a yes and to move them for a no. And once you've got those answers, you can begin to ask questions but what's interesting with this and in my opinion this is all subconscious there's no spirit activity here yeah. um, the the people it's all subconscious because you always get one person will go one way for a yes and another person will go another way and it happened with you guys right, okay. and some people just don't move at all um, and so it's what on, on like manipulation or is it it is manipulation is it about you manipulating our energy it's 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 subconscious so okay. I'm, a lot of people you know like I trust yourself and there's other people <laughs> Sorry, there's other people that we um, that we do it on, and, and I, I trust them. I, I know them very well, but they still always answer the questions. And you say, you know, we doing that on purpose? No, no, I, I didn't even feel like I was moving. Right. And it, it, it's subconscious, and even if you don't think you are, you are. Yeah. And, and yeah, and a lot of people just straight away write, "That's a ghost," or "That's a spirit," and they don't think and that's what I mean when, when they, they will use anything to, to back up their own beliefs as opposed to questioning it they dare question themselves I go into every investigation sceptical have you I mean I've heard of people um, I don't know how to, okay I call them light beings for better terminology somebody who believes they're here to heal the planet and we've got my own friends that do this Um and they'll go to certain sites of high death massacres like um, Auschwitz or somewhere. Auschwitz or the Battle of Bos Boswell Hill or wherever yeah. to free the spirits or to release them or to show them that they died and get yeah. them out of this purgatory or whatever. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? My thoughts, I think the problem with that is, is that you're assuming that 
that time is linear and that life is linear and that we die and our individual spirit is released and roams the earth, doesn't know what to do, doesn't know where to go. Um, why would they be stuck? So I've heard theories that they're stuck because they've done bad things in their life and they're scared to go to the light because they don't have any family members at the light so they don't want to go on their own. But that doesn't fit across the whole board. Yeah. There's always an exception. You know, well, he lived a very good life, so why is he still walking around? Um, for me, like I say, it, it, it's, it's understanding that we're all consciousness and that, that when when you die, your consciousness, something called a soul or a spirit, um, basically it's free of this biological vessel. And this biological vessel is what keeps us trapped within this five sense reality yeah. and restricts the true, um, I guess the true, uh, what's the word, basically the true fullness of what a consciousness can do. And without the biological vessel, it's free, and it can now vibrate on multiple frequencies. Mm -hmm. It can come in and out as it pleases. So I think people that believe they can send someone to the light, one that's difficult for me to believe as a, an atheist, because I don't believe there is an afterlife and a heaven. Um, but also, it's difficult for me to believe because you're treating people as individuals, mm -hmm. and I think outside of this world, we're not individuals. A we're not. Consciousness. I'm not Kieran anymore. Yeah. Um, we're just a collective consciousness. Yeah. So again, it's that difference in, in opinion. Whilst I appreciate their, okay, their yeah, work yeah. And, and their opinion, um, I'm just looking at it from a, a, a different angle. Interesting enough. But I mean, we've got a friend, Paul. Well, Paul, he's uh, the founder of United Planets. And he, uh, he had a near-death experience when he was a kid. Um, basically died on the operating table right. just before he was going to go under from a one of the number of operations he'd had um, and he had a life review and so for him that's it wasn't until later life that the things he'd seen start to play out in yeah, it yeah, yeah. and it made him have a greater understanding of what this thing is that we're in yeah. that there is something after when we die right. it doesn't have to be the heaven but a lot of stuff I read about is that your perception Say you're high, you're a Catholic, yep. and yep. if you've been lived a good life, you go into heaven. If you lived a bad life, you go to hell. Yep. When you cross over at some point, you're conscious, and you, I don't know, you have a review of everything you've done. Yep. And if I've hurt somebody, I will experience that from their point of yep. view yep. to learn the lessons. So any hell that you're expecting, you create your own hell. That's right. Yeah. That's it. You know, and then. But ultimately, it's for the whole growth of the conscious being, isn't it? Yeah. Every experience, whether it's Hitler's experience or Hitler's victims, it is all adds to the the melting pot of the conscious one conscious one conscious yeah. one conscious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think what, what's interesting there is how you talk about the kind of the, 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 this afterlife. One theory I've been touching on is um, that any paranormal, um, I guess, experience whether that be a UFO, uh, a ghost, a Bigfoot, if you strip away the nature of reality, if you strip away this hologram and get down to the coding, yeah. the matrix like, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm slowly coming round to believing that every single paranormal encounter is the same code, but what we're doing is we're manifesting our own belief and our own life experiences onto that code and making it what we want. Yeah. So if you're religious, you will always see the Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. guaranteed. You, you know, you want you want to see kind of Jesus or a Virgin Mary statue crying, you will. If you're a Bigfoot hunter, you'll see Bigfoot. If you go looking for ghosts and you believe in ghosts, you'll see ghosts. So I think everyone is encountering the same um, paranormal phenomena, but they're just manifesting their own life experiences image, yes. and an image and and making it what they want it to be. Fascinating. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Makes a lot of sense. Well, ultimately, we. We don't know, do we? No, we don't know. It's we a theory. Know. It's, it is it's, just it's a, a theory. We're all trying to make sense of this thing. Yeah, yeah. Strange times, isn't it? You know, we're, we've never been so united, but we've never been so divided. So apart, yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. if if we could all drop our... We, we want to have a belief, whether it's a belief in the government, or it's a belief in our own eyes of what we're seeing, or in when your kid asks you, what's going on, man? What's going on, Dad? You need to have to explain. Yeah, yeah, you want to. You have to have your own unique perspective, yeah. and that's fine. 
but we the thing like we said earlier is if we're all one consciousness we're only if I push you away for your political views or your view on what's going on I'm only pushing myself away but you're not learning man. you're never learning no, are you no. if we could all just unite wizard, this whole idea is unite planets it doesn't matter what our view is whether people are watching this and going nah 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 I can't, I can't buy that I can't. that doesn't matter that's not it's not what we're saying it's the thought behind it which is ultimately is we're all one thing yeah, aren't yeah. We? it doesn't matter what, what level of religion we are we're all one consciousness yeah. experiencing this thing that's right None of us, nobody can truly know because nobody ever come back from the dead and told you okay. well many people have wrote lots I of do, books I do, I do, try, and, I do try though <laughs> <laughs> well lots of people do but until they turn up and go you know what yeah. this is yeah which I wouldn't put past the government yeah, 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 having yeah. some holographic <laughs> guy turn up. I don't know, Abe yeah. Lincoln or something. Project Bluebeam. Yeah, yeah, this is what it is. But. I think um, uh, anyone that you know is watching this, if they don't agree with what I say, um, I welcome that discussion yeah. because they might have an opinion that, that pushes me in a direction I never thought I'd go in. It's the people that just kind of shut you down. Yeah. You don't have the same opinion, and this is happening all not just with ghosts or UFOs, politically as well. You yeah. know, you see on Facebook in certain groups, if you post something that doesn't have the same opinion as them, the moderators will bang you. And yeah. for me, that's completely wrong. It's this snowflake. I don't like the word, but it's this snowflake society. Yeah. Everyone has to have the same the opinion. opinion. Uh, everyone is, is offended if you don't have the same opinion. Yeah. And you learn by talking to someone with a different opinion because they could point you in a different direction. And if it, there's always some common ground. Always. Always. Is. Always. It doesn't matter what it is. You see, it's the, the most extreme thing I could probably call right now is the murderer and the murdered wife, yeah. the work family yeah. of the daughter, whoever. And they come together because the daughter knows that if she lives in hate, she will never be free. She'll just be as it won't imprisoned. Be yeah. She'll be imprisoned as he's imprisoned. Yeah. And for him to get that, it loosens it a bit for him. If he has a awareness of what he truly what done, he's done. Yeah, yeah. then he himself can be free. Because ultimately, like we're talking about in the conscious, we're only tying ourselves down. We're only weighing ourselves down because there is only us in this experience. That, that's the beauty of this thing, isn't it? And that's people, so many people living in this hate and fear and. I've got to disagree with what they're saying yeah, yeah. because ultimately, because I'm right. Because I'm wrong. Well, none of us are right. None, none of yeah, us are wrong. Yeah, yeah. We've all got an opinion because we're supposed to have an opinion. Yeah. But it's finding middle ground to be able to tolerate everybody. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that that's that, that's why I tend to stay out of this. This when I say I'm, I don't keep up to date with the all the mediums and all the investigators. <laughs> and stuff. Um, I try and stay out of it because of this kind of you know this infighting, this politics. You know, someone doesn't like somebody else because they got better evidence than them, yeah. or because they can investigate a place that they can't get into. And for me, if someone's got better evidence than you, just ask them to show it you. And and you know, because ultimately that's what we're all about. We're all about getting evidence in in the paranormal world. And if someone's got better evidence than you, they were just in the right place at the right time. And yeah. you know. well, do you find them obviously with the media, they 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 want to project their own idea of reality. Yes. So when they have these investigators on. Yeah. They're not the best investigator going, are they? No, I mean I mean you look at like most TV, Yeah, look they? at most haunted. I mean Yvette Fielding posted Blue Peter. Yeah. So she's got a history in just T V presenting. But Derek Akora he was a medium, was he? before Yeah, yeah, he, he Was he always a celebrity medium or No, was most haunted a... propelled him into stardom. And he grew and into that role as the larger than life yeah 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 i mean i quite liked derek i mean i never met the guy but he always did seem sincere to me um i know he got treated like absolute garbage by most haunted there's oh, vid did he? there's video footage of them on one of their live shows where the cameras were rolling and they didn't know and yvette fielding's calling him a, a lying bastard or something <laughs> i delve into the area's martial connections if we visit the building which houses not only the history of one of the most celebrated regiments in britain no, back to that chair, I've just realised that. Whoa. I just saw you. <laughs> That's a call, then isn't it? <laughs> Can I go? Can, whoa, yeah. Yeah. No, then you would have had a bag first. a minute later and got possessed five right. times after that. Okay. They don't do possessions as much things, though. I'm not sure. No, because possessions aren't real. Because he's a he's he's a fake bastard. Um, he, 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 they set him up a lot of the time. That Mary loves Dick, famous one. Right. Uh, no, the name Robert walks round, 
and I know Mary does, but there's this peace and calm of spiritual activity there with uh, You all right? You all right? Where is it, Barry? You all right? Mary loves Dick. Mary loves Dick. And they did it on purpose. They set him up. They, um, so more for him for falling for it. What do you think they're doing that to it's keep it tongue in cheek? It's entertainment, to... isn't it? Yeah, it's entertainment. Yeah. These shows start with you know this is for entertainment purposes only, and any show that starts with that, you know you're not going to get. You know you're, you know you're not going to get for right. a thing. I mean, like, like finding. I interviewed a guy on my podcast who worked on finding Bigfoot, the, the Discovery Channel program. And they were told by the producers that the paradox of this program is we can never find Bigfoot. Because if we do, yeah. there's no program. And I often think when I watch these, there's another one now, Expedition Bigfoot or something. And I have to think if they did find Bigfoot, it would have broke long before this show got edited and put on TV. We'd have seen it. Yeah. You know, it would have escaped somewhere. Um, not Bigfoot, but the, the footage would have escaped. And these, this guy was saying that they actually have got solid evidence of a Bigfoot coming into their camp on footage but the producers repressed it and wouldn't let them show it because then they found Bigfoot and that's the end of the show and and, and I, I always find that just fascinating well there's a lot of the Bigfoot stuff it sort of points to uh, interdimensional well that's what I believe yeah. I, I believe I, that, I mean he, he often appears where UFO sightings have occurred um, I, I believe that all it is is UFOs, ghosts, Bigfoot, they're all operating on different frequencies yeah. and I always describe it as a block of flats so if you're living on one <coughs> floor Bigfoot might be above you, you've got the greys on the top, you've got the spirits below you and you know they're there because you hear them and they, they move the furniture around or they play the, the music too loud um, and you might occasionally cross paths as you're going into the lift but ultimately you can't interact with each other because you're on different floors and I think that's what's going on here and I think there are times where you will see a Bigfoot or a ghost or a UFO and all that's happening is like in your car when you listen to Radio 1 and all of a sudden it kind of messes up and you get two stations mixing together yeah. uh, and then it fixes itself and I think that's what happens with us you know you see a Bigfoot because something's happened to your your frequency perception and all of a sudden you can access their frequency before it fixes itself People say, you know, the ghost was in front of me and it vanished. The UFO was there and it just disappeared. Yeah. Bigfoot walked behind the tree, but he didn't come out the other side. I would argue that it did come out the other yeah. side. I would yeah. argue that the spirit or the UFO didn't disappear. It's still there. It's just that your radio, your yeah. brain, has fixed itself and now you're back to just listening to Radio 1. Yeah. So, okay, I, I, I can I totally follow that. Um, so, how do you... I mean, I, I myself, I've said, I've done the videos about the DMT. For me, that's how I tune in to the different frequencies to be able to experience high dimensional beings, which are as clear as day, and as real, if not more real than this. And you also have a familiarity of being home. Yeah. The, this thing is just a tiny fraction of the whole of everything. Yeah. We're awake. All, we're through that whole block of flats, yeah. and on different levels, we're experienced with them. Yeah. But this reality is the only one where we're blinking and we can't see them. Yeah, yeah. So, do you ever think about that? Would that would you go into a haunted house and maybe take an hallucinogenic or something to try and get into that frequency, or was that, was um, that too much for you? I've never had. I've never put a cigarette in my mouth. Okay. Um, alcohol is the the only thing I I take, I guess. So um, when people talk, I mean, I've never had weed. I've never tried DMT or anything like that. Um, I think the older I've got and the more open to this kind of stuff I've got, mm -hmm. the more, the less reluctant I am to do it. So I, I would try it in, in a safe environment yeah. with people around me. Um, it does cross my mind in terms of ghosts. It, you know, if I was to pop a pill here or yeah. whatever, would 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 I see things that I wouldn't see? Well, before? if you think about Native um, Native American Indians when they walk with the spirits, yeah, yeah, and they yeah, take yeah. ayahuasca or the um, What's they, the cactus they, one? Yeah, they, 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 they drink it. Yeah, yeah. They drink it and yeah. they walk with the spirit. Yeah. For me, that was the same thing as what I do when I sit in the backyard and I smoke I think we, and I see all the whether it's a parallel universe, yeah. or a parallel world, yeah, or yeah. It's something that's overlaid and they're all overlaid on this. This is my perspective. Yeah. Many people will go, ah, it's just drugs. And I can, I, I've got, I respect that because, but I, I respect it only because they, they haven't done enough investigation. No, no. You know. 
I think ultimately what you're doing there by taking these, 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 these drugs is you're giving yourself the ability to listen to both radio stations at the yes. same time. Exactly. You know, you, yeah. you've got like a digital radio station, you can access stations that someone with an older car can't, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I think people like mediums and psychics have that ability yes. anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're born with that ability, but some of us have to manipulate it yeah. artificially, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it most certainly has crossed my mind. Um, yeah. It's just I'm not. So in a paranormal world, uh, uh, most people coming round to this realization that everything is frequency and it's all to do with consciousness. No, no, that, that's not the most. That's not the common thought process. It's not. No, people are still stuck in. No. Yeah, well, th this is Victorian my argument. Yeah, this is kind of one thing I often say in interviews is that the investigation, paranormal investigation, has just plateaued. We're not going anywhere. We're still using the same equipment that we did ten years ago. We're still using the same techniques we're asking the same questions you know you get onto a spirit board and you say are you male are you female is there anybody there? when did you die do you want to hurt us and it's like to be quite honest i don't care if he's a man or a woman my question is have you met god you, you know like where are you now what what yeah, is yeah. the world that you're in now they're my questions and you know i've been shot down for asking those i've had other seasoned investigators pull me to one side and say you can't ask those kind of questions and, and my argument is, well, why? That's what I'm here for. Yeah, what was I, the I, I, you know, I, It's not that I don't care if he's a man or a woman, because finding that stuff out, out helps you kind of um, confirm the location that you're in, and you can do some you know, history searching and see that that person did live there at that time, so you mm -hmm. were possibly communicating with, a, with that person. Um, but for me, it's all about where are they, what are they, how are they operating, how are they able to come and talk to us? Have they met God? You know, and, and, and these are the questions I want to know, but it's not happening. So people are still of the opinion that they're all dead people. Well, do you all... get answers when you ask them questions? Um, yeah, we were apparently speaking to a monk who I asked if he'd met God, and he said no. Um, Where was he in the time? I the asked time him. Line? Yeah, so I asked him what the year was, and he told me it was his year, which was ten something, I think, if I remember rightly. Okay. Uh, he was with his family. Um, so he was alive and well at well, that point when you were talking? I didn't get to ask that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, that I got stopped. Oh, by the guy, yeah, yes. Yeah. It, it, it frustrates me because these are the questions I want to ask. Um, and do you think, and do you now I operate on be, my own, I can. Yeah. Do you believe you have to be at a certain site to ask them? Or do you think you're in, just in the collective? Ether? Yeah, that, that's interesting because there's locations we do a lot so you get used to locations and you get used to hot spots you know we never get anything there but in that room we quite often do and that's true to its word we often find that if we try and do a spirit board in a place that we've never had any activity we won't have any activity if there's a room where we always do we do but one question i've posed off the back of that well is it because we expect to have activity in there so, so we, we our manifest reality. our own activity yeah. and we're going into that room it's got put, to put it into a sport perspective if you're going onto a f football or a rugby pitch half expecting to lose yeah. you've already given the other team yeah. an advantage um and it's like that so if you go somewhere going oh i'm not going to get anything here nine times out of ten you won't and that's where these people that go not believing in it are not going to experience anything because anything that they do experience they'll just answer away as it yeah. was something else and at the same time you get people the other end of the scale who everything is a ghost they won't question anything you know any shadow is a ghost any bump is a ghost and you have to be in the middle yeah you know you have you have to look rule out anything it could possibly be and even then it only might be paranormal mm. okay scariest shit in your pants <laughs> moment of your life was it um, supernatural what was it no, I've, tell me I've, been, no. I've been in a few rough pubs up north but uh. yeah. yeah we've all been in there <laughs> <laughs> okay it's in the supernatural sense where you thought what the hell just happened what the hell is um, this going on shit the f one of the very first hunts I went on we were in a place called Drake Low Tunnels mm -hmm. and I did a, a human pendulum and that's kind of what we spoke about earlier but instead of having multiple people it's just one person and I am a firm believer that no spirit activity takes place during a human pendulum. I think it's all subconscious. And that's why this was so interesting for me. Because I felt like I was stood stock still. According to the people around me, I was doing the Michael Jackson lean. Which for someone who's 19 and a half stone, yeah. 6 foot 1, that's difficult to do. 
Um, so literally like that? Literally stood like that. Right. And I was, you, well, I, can't, yeah. I don't know how I'd do that. Uh, but I felt like I was just stood still. Uh, and apparently the, the more these, the questions were asked, the more violent I was getting. Until eventually I felt a smack on the top of my head um, and threw me backwards. And the guy behind had to stop me from hitting the floor. And I was literally carried out of the room. And we went into the room next door. Uh, I was asked what my name was, didn't know. Asked what day of the week it was, got it wrong. Couldn't remember what I had for breakfast. I was just gone. So after about five minutes or so, I eventually started to, to come round and we heard a growl. And the growl came from right behind me and I instantly spun around. And the guy that was with me said, well, no, no, just, just look at me. So I was like, okay, fine. So I ignored it and just carried on focusing on him. Eventually I felt okay and we went back to this other room. We found out that they'd been recording on a on a, an EVP recorder and they'd captured at the same time that we'd heard the growl the word hello and that was just that was weird because for me that was when it pushed me down this theory of frequencies um, because we heard a growl so with the human ear that can only decode sound at particular yeah. frequencies um, we heard a growl and it was animalistic it was evil and you'd be you'd forgiven for thinking this was this wanted to hurt you but on an EVP recorder that can pick up... What's EVP stand for? Electronic voice phenomena. Okay. But on an EVP recorder that can not that, that can pick up higher and lower frequencies than the human ear, yeah. it picked up the word hello, which I found interesting. Right. Because we would have gone, oh, so God. Almost like a translator. Yeah, that's exactly it. So the human ear didn't get it. So you've got a TV um, or a radio. You turn your radio on, it's just static. You move the aerial a bit, tune it into the right frequency, you're now going to get a song. And I think that's what happened there. We heard the static, this growl, yeah. which ultimately is what we're doing when I talk to you. It's just a growl. Yeah. Um, but the recorder managed to pick it up on the right frequency and give us the word hello. It was quite an innocent, you know, hello. Um, and it was too completely, you know, that was re a really evil animalistic growl, but what they were saying was just a nice, friendly hello. Um, so ultimately, if, if you could, if you could, would this EVP, EVP machine... Could you, whatever you heard, could it translate it instantly so you could hear it? So maybe, yeah, oh, uh, if you heard like you a growl, you can get those. You can get like, those. Hello, my name's Jane or something. Yeah. You can get, so I've make, got what, It might make hauntings a bit less frightening, maybe. Well, it depends what you're hearing. <laughs> Cause there are Hello, my name's Jane and I'm right behind you. Because <laughs> there are entities that do want to hurt you, just as there are in real life. Um, you know, we've experienced that as well. Um, so why do you think that is? Why, yeah. why do they want... Well, yeah. I, I think, in, as in everything, there has to be a balance in everything. The yin and the yang. Yeah. Okay. And I think you have positive... And I think you have negative energy. Negative consciousness. Um, and I think that has to happen for the good of the world. Because bad can't be... There's um, no light without that. Well, well, bad can't be shown yeah. up without the light to illuminate the bad. Yeah. Get very David Lynch here, um, but yeah. No, I get it. it I get it. Uh, um, so, How would so, you know if you were good if you never experienced if you'd never bad? experienced bad and yeah. vice versa? Yeah. So yeah, there, there, are, there is negative consciousness. Right. They're in government. <laughs> he said that. He said, Mr. Johnson. He said that I, I would never say anything against the government. Honestly. The future. Where does it lie, man? Would say. Uh, well, now oh, you're a friend of night Which will, if you're loving this sort of stuff, we can interview. Kieran again, uh, you know, leave us some questions and we'll post them to him. It can be a regular thing. He's only he's local to me, you know. I think this is this is honestly six foot apart. I've got really long arms. <laughs> <laughs> I think the um, the future for me is I'm working on my second book. Um, we'll put a link to his first book. I'll plug interested. my first book. Yeah, yeah, of course, man. So the first book was an introduction to paranormal investigation. So it was basically me just getting fed up of people coming to investigations expecting the most haunted experience, which was a, pos a possession in within 10 minutes and a, you know things flying off the shelf within 20. Yeah. It doesn't happen like that. So I thought I'd write like a beginner's guide for people to, to really understand what ghost hunting is all about. And my next book is going to be more about the experiences. So someone that's picked up the first book is now growing and they're going to start experiencing. So that's what the next book is. Um, I've got my podcast, the Paranormal Paradigm Podcast. Um, we'll put a link for all this, this stuff. Yeah, and it, it's that. I mean, for me, I do genuinely worry about the future of paranormal investigation. Um, partly because of evidence. So, Photoshop, CGI, 
computerized. Can we ever fully, truly believe what we see ever yeah. again? Yeah. Um, probably not. You could be shown the best piece of evidence you will ever see, and there will always be a nagging in your mind, or there'll always be someone stood over your shoulder saying, that could be photoshopped. Yeah. And so you're never going to know if you're looking at a true piece of evidence. So for me, I'm moving more and more towards pers it being a personal experience. And ghost you can use all the equipment you want. But you could have equipment with faulty batteries, faulty wiring, that can be affected by surrounding electronics. Yeah. The only thing you can truly trust is yourself. Yeah. And if you go to bed knowing you lied about seeing something, well, that's your own fault and you've got to live with it. But if you go to bed knowing that you saw something and you trust it and you don't know what it was, you can't explain it, then it's a personal experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where it's going, moving away from the equipment, moving away from the gadgets and just making it a very, very personal experience. Yeah, that's, uh, because ultimately, what you're saying is correct. We're, I mean, we both come from a UFO background. Now, everything you see, every time they show you a UFO on, on wherever, YouTube, you, you're looking to try and who who made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why aren't people reacting? Why is it blowing? How would I scream? <laughs> why is it on a loop? What You know, why aren't everybody screaming? Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. Why aren't the kids going, look at that, Dad? All them things make it dismissive because, like you say, Photoshop and all the CGI stuff, it's so clever. They've ruined it, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. But we also know whether the 9 11, whether you, whether you believe there's, there's no planes, there was a hologram. Yeah. Then, so they could literally holographically image. Uh, it's Project Bluebeam, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, a ghost, you know. Yeah. And, and whether, I don't know, the MK, all the other mind stuff that we could go into, which I, I'm not going to, but. Where they can actually put an idea into your head. Yeah, yeah. This is all part of the control machine to counteract us from really waking up and realizing what, what we is. are. Well, I mean, the closer you get to the, the truth. truth about paranormal, the closer you get to your own identity because it's connected, and they don't want you no, to no. truly know what, which is why you're on, why you're on this conscious channel. Because ultimately, we're just consciousness. Yeah, that's it. And if you if you went. That, that might be me. Maybe I'm haunting myself yeah, from another like timeline. Caught, caught himself cleaning his teeth. Yeah. yeah. You know, we all have them moments, don't we, where we go, we think we're going to know about the future. Maybe we just saw something in a dream that was so real that we think. I had one last night, uh, and as soon as I got in the car, this, the van this morning, I turned it on. I had a flashback to a black car hitting me from behind. So all day when I've been driving, I've been looking thinking, for a black car. I've been given black cars. This <laughs> yeah. well, is that a future thing? Is it another timeline? Is it whatever it is? It, it was real, but I forgot all about it in the dream. Yeah. But now it's stuck in my head. Yeah. I'm, I'm, now I'm not manifesting. But, it, I I saying, but are you going to manifest? I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'm not going to slow down just to get hit. <laughs> but it is what it is. You know, the, the, like you said, the true nature of our. <laughs> reality the conscious what we are conscious beings trying to find out the secret to the paranormal all will be revealed but only when your heart stops but so yeah you see it that's so, when you'll truly know won't you so but again it is a personal thing whether you're looking for ghosts ufos or true nature of reality it's a personal experience it because for me i've been at a, a ghost event and i've been stood next to you know one of my closest friends who i trust you know to a t and he stood there saying, can you see this? You know, I'm, I'm looking at a, a bloke stood in a door. Can you not see this? And I'm, I'm like, no, I can't see a thing. Does that mean he's lying? Right. No. I've been there when people have just said, oh, you're lying. And what a horrible thing to say. Yeah. Because you don't know what they're experiencing. That's it. Um, so ultimately, he's just probably tuned into a frequency that I can't. Yeah. And he's having this experience and great for him. That doesn't mean I should belittle yeah. him or be jealous of him or yeah. anything. Um, you should just celebrate the fact that he's had that experience and it will change his perception and it will help him grow. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, it will, that's what it, it is. It will give him the confidence to go, wow. Well, there's something. Yeah. yeah. There's something there. Yeah. Right. Cheers, brother. Nice one. We'll, uh, we'll do this again. I, yeah. hope, uh, I hope the sound was good. Or the lads will turn it up if it wasn't. And, okay. Uh, we'll do this again, yeah?